Charlie. The mail's on the table, Mary. Oh, thank you, Charlie. How are you? Fine. How's the family? <laughs> What's the matter? Well, I, I'm not used to having people ask me about my actual personal life. Well, I'm just interested. Why? <laughs> well, because we work together and I don't know very much about you. Well, I suppose everybody's fine. I, my wife's having a little trouble with her back, but she's up and around. Uh -huh. My daughter's starting to send off for those college catalogs. Somebody put you up to this? No, Tully, I just really am interested in you. Well, would you like to come over to the house for dinner sometime? Sure, I'd love it. Really? Yeah, name the day. I, tomorrow night. I, I, no, my wife has a folk dance class. Uh, Thursday. I, no, the Union film series is showing Norma Ray. Uh, Friday is Dallas. Saturday, I go bowling. Uh-huh, how about Sunday? Sunday. Good choice. That's the night the old wizard of the barbecue takes care of the cooking chores. Oh, well, good. Yeah, my wife. <laughs> ah, mail's in. So what do we hear from the shafted of Chicago? Well, it is an interesting one. It's from an ex-convict who wants to clear his name. Seems he's been appealing to the governor for a pardon for years with no luck. Hey, you know, this could make a good story. What do you do? He stole some tires off of Hudson in 1939. Well, how do you know he won't do it again? <laughs> What's in that package, Mary? Well, I don't know. It's from someone who calls himself Candy Kevin, with two Ks. <laughs> Seems he's opening up a new shop, wants me to have this sample of chocolate-covered espresso, beans, and hopes to get my endorsement. Well, I'm sorry, Candy Kevin, I cannot do that. You know, with that kind of attitude, Mary, people are gonna stop sending you stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what, you use your column to get free merchandise? Well, not as much as I'd like to. <laughs> Did you see this sweater? This was the result of a column I wrote entitled, Boy, Would I Like a New Sweater? <laughs> and this shirt? Well, no, wait a minute, I paid for this shirt. Oh, no, I remember. I found it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, you can endorse these. Well, I gotta applaud you, Mary. In these days, to have a working system of morals and really stick by them, Mmm. I'm gonna mention these all week. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Hey, did y'all hear who's in the building? Who? The man who owns most of the world in this newspaper, Malcolm Burke himself. Really? Yep. He's right down in the lobby, boys and girls. And it's a madhouse down there. There's reporters everywhere. There's even one of ours. <laughs> He's owned this paper for three years. This is the first time he set foot in the building. Hey, everybody, guess who's in the building? Malcolm Burke. He's here? No, I was talking about the fellow who comes around selling hot jewelry. <laughs> What's Malcolm Burke here for? He's looking for a little gold choker. Oh, smart. <laughs> Why do you think he's here? Well, inside word is he's just in town for a couple of days to check the place out and then move on. At least that's what the guy from the Tribune said. Yeah. You watch. Every notable and politician in Chicago is going to be up here to kiss this guy's ring. You know, this is just the kind of thing that brings us sycophants and toadies out of the woodwork. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm Burke, I'd like to thank you for the most memorable elevator ride of my life. And, uh, I hope you consider my proposal. It's an idea whose time I believe has come. And if you should want me to recommend any theaters, get you any tickets, if there's anything I can do to make your stay in Chicago more enjoyable, please say the word. Get your hand off the door. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're on your way. <laughs> well, I must admit, the man charmed me. <laughs> I can't understand you, Ed. Wipe the shoe polish off your tongue. <laughs> I wrote an idea by him for a television series that I uh, really think is quite exciting. Now, you must bear in mind that I watch television as frequently as Olivier appears on it. But uh, here's my brainstorm, Mary Brenner. A series of specials, each centered on a famous play. Sounds good. Ah, wait, there's more. On the set, in the corner, will be your critic, Ed LaSalle. Then, from time to time, I'll freeze the action and offer a critique. I call it Play by Play by Ed LaSalle. <laughs> what do you think? I like it. Yeah. I know when I go to the theater, I'm always annoyed that they'll go through an entire act without stopping. <laughs> well, uh, certainly a few plays would not warrant my intrusion. Uh, for instance, during King Lear, it might suffice simply to you know, superimpose me in the corner of the screen, giving Shakespeare one of these. <laughs> 
What do you think? <laughs> Joe? <laughs> well, it appears I've made an ass of myself in front of a very important person. <laughs> And what are these, Candy Kevin? Macadamia nuts covered in white chocolate. I'm very proud of them. Mmm, I think I can come up with some words on these. I'll take a half a pound. I really appreciate this. And I'll take a pound of the amaretto truffles, uh -huh. some of this divinity fudge, uh -huh. and about a hundred of these chocolate-covered reception sticks. <laughs> I hope you'll mention that for Valentine's Day, we'll be making up some beautiful gift baskets. Yeah, yeah. Who else is opening up in that mall? Any leather shops? <laughs> yeah, right next to me is Ted's Tannery Row. Great. Tell him I take a size six. Well, maybe you do now. And here's a photo of the kids at the Universal Studio Tour. Hey, that's Dom DeLuise's parking space they're standing in. And here, here is a shot of my pride and joy. My wife. Tully, that's your driver's license. Uh, I thought it was an incredibly flattering picture of her. So you're having dinner with the Tullys, Mary? Yeah, I am. You ever been there? Yeah. Wasn't crazy about the neighborhood. But I understand they've parked their home in a new one. <laughs> It's Mary Brenner from the Chicago Eagle Helpline. Morning, troops. I called the governor's office uh, yesterday, and nobody got back to me. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of important, so if you could have somebody from the staff get back to me, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Mary, what do you got working with the governor? Oh, Frank. What I think would be a terrific story. Here, read that. It's from an older man who committed a petty crime. He served his full term and has been a model citizen for 40 years. It's a, kind of a skeleton in his closet. He'd like the black mark removed from his record. Oh, this is good. This is terrific. I knew this helpline was a good idea. Every so often, you get a story like this, you could just take and run with. Mary, I want to throw this on the feature page. Big splash. Get involved. Power of the press. The Chicago Eagle will get this man his pardon or know the reason why. Oh, no, 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 Frank. I, I think the less publicity, the better. I mean, the man's carved out a whole new life for himself. I'd like to keep this an anonymous helpline piece. Mary, you want to help this guy? Your way will take forever. Believe me, when there's a story with pictures on the front page of the Chicago Eagle, then he'll get his pardon. Well, thank you, Frank, but I'd rather handle it my way. <laughs> Mary, I look around me and I only see one private office on this whole floor. <laughs> and I see the name Frank DeMarco on its door. That must mean he's somebody very important. <laughs> no, no, Mary, you and I have an honest dispute here. I want to help this man, get him what he asks for, and in the process, turn this into a warm, interesting story. Show the people of Chicago that this paper really cares. You want to bury it. No, Frank, I want to honor his privacy. You want to exploit him to sell papers. Oh, this is a toughie. <laughs> we better go in there and get his final word on this. You think you're really cute when oh, you do that, don't you? You're asking for it. Really, really cute. Just get, get in there. <laughs> Frank, I cannot, in good conscience, do the story your way. Setting your conscience aside, can you do it my way? No. Well, I can respect that. I'll just have someone else write it. What? Hey, Mary, why don't you hang out here for a few minutes? Let that think he gave me a hard time. Frank, you wouldn't really take my story away. Oh, Mary, don't say my story like it was a puppy. <laughs> It's news, and this is a newspaper. It's a great human interest story, and I will print it with or without your help. All right, Frank, look. Look, I know you have the right to decide where to print things. I do. And I know you have the right to decide who'll do the articles. I do. Wait a minute, I'm arguing this all wrong. <laughs> the fact is, Mary, what I say around here goes. All right then, Frank. I want to file a formal protest. With whom, the commissioner of baseball? <laughs> Mary, there are no protests, formal or otherwise. Here at the Chicago Eagle, there's just me. 
<laughs> King of the Eagle, are you, Frank? The Major Domo? The Grand Poopa? Poopa, Mary. Whatever. I've made my decision. All right, Frank. What about that publisher upstairs? Just how many rungs beneath you is he on the corporate ladder? <laughs> Malcolm Burke has nothing to do with this. He could. Are you thinking of taking this upstairs? <laughs> something I could do. Is it something you will do, Mary? It's something I might do. Well, what will help you make up your mind? <clears throat> well, I don't know. Maybe if I knew what would happen to me if I did it. <laughs> I can help you there. You'd be fired. Frank, this is very important How to me. How important? Because if you go over my head, you lose the fight, you lose the story, and your job to boot. Well, you certainly shut me up, haven't you? Certainly demonstrated what an iron-fisted ogre you are. There is certainly no doubt what a I big... I thought you said I going. shut you up. <laughs> Would you mind if I slam the door on my way out? If it makes you feel good. Do you mind putting your nose in it first? <laughs> well, this is crazy. It's after two and still no lunch cart. Where is Mr. Yummy? Well, he must be in the building. We saw some rats scurrying around the floor. Oh. Here. Truffle. No, thanks. I don't want to spoil my appetite. For Mr. Yummy? Uh, every day he is late. I am sure that even when he's on time, he stands outside the door just to annoy us. <laughs> is there something wrong, Mary? Yes. I backed down in there. I allowed myself to be bullied by Frank. Uh-huh. Here, have a chocolate-covered macadamia nut. That'll make everything all right. Joe, I don't think you understand. My conscience is eating away at me. I sold my soul in there. No chocolate-covered macadamia nut is gonna make that all right. I hear you, Mary. This calls for divinity fudge. <laughs> Joe, have you been listening to anything I've been... Divinity fudge? Yeah. Come on, Mary. It was a tough one to lose, but look at the bright side. <sighs> Just think how much easier it'll be to compromise your principles next time. <laughs> That's what bothers me the most. Oh, well. Even if I had gone over Frank's head and talked to Burke, I'm sure he wouldn't have agreed with me. And then I've lost my job for nothing. Good, Mary. Rationalize. Rationalize. Joe, will you leave me alone? You don't have to take it out on me. Are you right? I'm sorry. I don't mean to take it out on you. I don't want to take it out on anyone. I just want to be left alone. Where is that twerp with the sandwiches? Hey, everybody, you know who I just saw in the building? Frank Sinatra. Get out of here, Frank yeah. Sinatra. I saw him with my own two eyes. Hey, got his autograph, too. Best wishes, Lee Iacocca. <laughs> oh. Well, that explains his reaction when I asked him what it was like to make love to Ava Gardner. Hiya, folks. I'm very sorry I'm late, but I got hung up selling to all those reporters down in the lobby. And I suppose they're more important than your regular customers up here. <laughs> What's with you? I'm hungry! <laughs> well, I hate to tell you this, lady, but I am completely sold out. Sold out? If this is how I make <sighs> my living, I was hoping maybe you would be happy for me. Well, that's the last straw, yummy. <laughs> Every day you come in here late, your sandwiches are stale, and on top of that, you are rude and unkempt. <laughs> Please, Mary Brenner. The man is an actor. He has a fragile ego. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had a rough day, but there's no reason to take it out on you just because you're late. And that is the same T-shirt you have worn every day for the last five months. Apology accepted. And incidentally, I have two of these shirts, and I rotate them monthly. Ed, I know how interested you've been in my career. Uh, you think you could manage to uh, fall by the Backstreet Theater this weekend and see me? Oh, what play are you performing in now? Oh, no, 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 it's not a play, Ed. It's my new act. I am now an Elvis impersonator. Oh, well, it might surprise you to know that uh, I was a great admirer of the king. Ah. He was a rebel, his own man. He left an indelible mark on an entire generation. For me, no song sums that up better than Viva Las Vegas. <laughs> 
I'll dedicate that to you and your date, Ed. I think I'll be alone. Are you lonesome tonight? <laughs> This is our city room. We cleaned up for you. Quite bustling. Good. Oh, Ed LaSalle, Malcolm Burke. Ed, I've given some thought to your television proposal. While I don't think it's right for the Burke-owned stations, I wish you luck in selling it elsewhere. Lots and lots of luck. Ah, pleasure as always. <laughs> Harry Broussard, General Simons. We stole him from the Tribune. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Pleased Burke. Pleased to meet you, Harry. Joe Tucker, Mainline Chicago. I read you when I can, Miss Tucker. I'd love to have your biting wit. All right, uh, I'll trade you for a couple of your TV stations. <laughs> Mary Brenner, our helpline columnist. You do. Miss Brenner, the helpline must be very fulfilling work. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> it isn't? It could be. What do you mean? Nothing, really, nothing. Please don't let me hold up your oh. tour. No, Mary's terrific. I'm very happy we have her here. Then I am too. And I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Mary, uh, is there something bothering you? <clears throat> no, not really. I'm only here today. I'm fine. Good. Goodbye, Miss Brenner. Um, I'll Mr. Burke, there is something I'd like to talk to you about. Well, surprise, surprise. What is it? <laughs> Well, it's private. I understand. Frank, uh, why don't the three of us go into your office? I think it's more private than that. Uh, why don't the two of you just go ahead? Thank you, Frank. Sweet. <laughs> you can sit behind the desk. Thank you. Sorry. You'll have to bear with me. I'm just a little nervous. That's okay. Do sit down. Thank you. Everybody who talks to me gets nervous. One notable exception, Anwar Sadat. <laughs> when we spoke about possible solutions to the strife in the Middle East. But now we're here to talk about your problem. <laughs> I received a request from a reader. It seems that he stole some tires off a car 40 years ago, but, but he served his time, changed his life, and has been clean as a whistle ever since. Nobody knows about his past, and he'd like to have the crime removed from his record. Seems reasonable. Oh, I'm so glad to hear you say that. <laughs> anyway, Frank DeMarco heard about it, and he thought it would make a good story for the feature page, but see, I feel that that's a breach of ethics. The man didn't ask to be recognized. He has to be helped. You believe the man's sincere? Ah, yes. And you made your feelings clear to Frank? Yes. But he wouldn't budge. <laughs> well, Frank can be a little stubborn. <laughs> Don't I know it. <laughs> of course, that may be one of the qualities that makes him, in my humble but uh, all-important opinion, <laughs> the finest newspaper editor in the country. Yes, well... <laughs> A short time that, that I have been here, uh, I certainly have been impressed with this. Mary, very I forceful. consider Frank to be the son I never had. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he knows the newspaper game. He lives and breathes newspapers. He's the only person I've met who can take a losing daily and turn it around. He's done it for me in, in Denver. He's done it for me in San Francisco. He's doing it here. Do you know that I was close to just shutting down this newspaper? Oh, that, that would have been awful. 400 people out of a job instead of just one. <laughs> well, Mary, good luck to you. Thank you. By the way, I was reading your column this morning. Fascinating. Yes, well... Cornflakes packed by weight rather than volume can condense during shipping. <laughs> yes, but that much. Who knew? <laughs> Frank, you can have your office back now. Goodbye again, Mary. Goodbye. You got a tip-top staff here. Thank you, Malcolm. Uh, I think I keep my eye on that Ed LaSalle. You know, the, uh, the would-be Alistair Cook? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Mary, how'd it go? 
You know how it went, Frank. That's why I ask. <laughs> certainly has a lot of respect for you. It's nice that someone thinks I know what I'm doing. Mary, how could you do this to me? Why do you put me in a position of having to fire you? Are you going to fire me? I don't know. I have to think about it. <laughs> Did you understand that my threat was real? Yes. Mary, you're not helping me. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, you got your job. Oh, thank you. How come? Mary, what are you trying to do? Start another argument? Mm. Writers with your conviction are hard to find. Not impossible, mind you, but hard to find just the same. So just don't do it again. All right, thank you, Frank. That is just so decent of you. What about the story? I still feel making a big splash on the front page is wrong machine. with talking about it, man. You are a machine. I have never met anyone like you, Mary. If I have respect enough for you as a reporter to take you back after this, it just follows that I have enough respect for you to give you that story and let you do it your own way. Thank you. <laughs> You know, Frank, deep down, I really believed you would come over to my side after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm starting to realize that you and I are a lot alike. I mean, I know when I go after something, I don't quit. I mean, I don't take no for an answer. No, Frank. Well, I try. <laughs> Later tonight on Crazy Like a Fox, a husband's seven-year disappearance and sudden demands for money mean trouble in a tropical paradise. Then on The Equalizer, McCall avenges a deadly labor dispute when mob connections lead to murder. All later tonight.